Today we are visiting Camp Ford in Northeast Texas near the city of Tyler. Camp Ford was the largest Confederate prisoner of war camp west of the Mississippi River. It was named in honor of Colonel John Rip Ford, who originally established a training camp here in 1862. In the summer of 1863, it was converted to a prison camp. At first, it consisted of five acres enclosed by a stockade that was 16 feet high. In the spring of 1864, following the Confederate victories in Louisiana and Arkansas, the enclosure was doubled to accommodate the influx of prisoners. Although the condition became very overcrowded, it was reduced due to a series of prisoner exchanges between the North and the South. Union prisoners representing nearly 100 different regiments were confined here, plus sailors, Union sympathizers, spies, and even Confederate deserters. The prisoners constructed their own shelters, ranging from log huts and burrows, called shebangs, to brush arbors and blanket tents. Monotonous and generally inadequate would be a kind description of the rations at Camp Ford. The primary meat ration was beef, issued, quote, on the hoof with the prisoners serving as their own butchers. The cattle were generally in poor condition. One prisoner account describes steers so weak that two men could walk up and grab them by the horns to commence the slaughtering process. The prisoner accounts are substantiated by the archeological record as every excavation has turned up fragments of bone. That the cattle had horns is substantiated by the high number of surviving carved horns as prison art. The primary bread was cornmeal, of which the prisoners complained was unbolted and ground cob and all. Local residents were sometimes allowed to sell produce to the inmates, but by the fall of 1864, the area around the camp was reaching its limit in supplying food. And also wood for cooking fires was hard to come by because the area had been deforested as far as one mile surrounding the camp. Escape attempts were numerous from Camp Ford, although only a small percentage were successful. Plans for a mass breakout were thwarted in early November 1863 with the building of the stockade. One of the earliest documented escapes was in December 1863 when two men of the 26th Indiana literally walked out with a group of enlisted men being sent to Shreveport for exchange. The camp mortality rate was low at 6% due to the abundance of water provided by a large spring that flowed along the south wall. Development in the early 20th century covered up the spring, but it is still somewhat visible today. Although conditions were primitive, it compared favorably with the other Civil War prison camps. Camp Ford continued to serve as a prison until the surrender of the Trans-Mississippi Department in May 1865. It was later destroyed by federal occupation troops. Around 1918, the camp spring was dammed for a swimming lake, and by the 1960s, all evidence of the camp being here was covered by a forest of trees. Oh